Today in the bunker, we're going to build some post-apocalyptic water storage tanks for our fallout water treatment facility. One of the main features of water treatment plants are those large outside round tanks that are generally open on the top. I've ordered some takeaway plates, takeout plates, um, from Amazon. I, I got these because they were nine inches across and I wanted them to be kind of huge. Uh, but you could use the regular ones, they're slightly smaller, you get from uh, Chinese takeout or whatever, or you can buy at the grocery store. Um, these ended up being about a buck a piece. So, a little expensive for this, I, I could have just probably ordered some takeout and just kept the thing, but I, I was set on having that size, and uh, that's probably going to be my undoing. But anyway, we're going to add some foam to kind of bring up the level a little bit, because I don't want to try and do, you know two inches of water effect. And uh, water effect is something that I've never done before, so there's another learning experience, much like the last episode with concrete. Uh, we'll see, maybe this will come out a little better. So we're gonna put some siding on this to make it more like an upright tank, and uh, we'll go from there. So we will carry on. To cover around the outside perimeter of this and make it more of a an up and down tank. I'm going to take some of this corrugated paper that I got um, out of a some kind of shipping container. But it's the corrugations are kind of giant, but I think they'll actually work really well for this. And for the base, I'm going to take a couple of pieces of chipboard that I've treated with sanding sealer. You can see the, the shine on there. And because this, I insisted on making this to be bigger than what I would be using for the base. I'm going to use two of these together and put on there and then we'll trace around and, and make a base that won't be quite so huge and uh, it'll look a lot neater. So we will continue. All I've done is just traced, I put this upside down, traced around it to get an idea of the widest extent of its footprint and then I'm, I just put painter's tape on here for now to hold it together and yeah it's really super centered but and then I'm gonna just cut around this and make sort of a more organic base not too far out but uh, enough that we can put a little ground cover on there and it'll look good and I cut them sort of irregular so they look a little more organic which helps because if you're like me and you can't cut them all that precisely to begin with then that's a fantastic excuse the other thing is, is that you have some large pieces left over. We can cut this into other basing sizes and use this as we go, so don't throw that away. This piece that I cut was not quite long enough, so we're going to have to extend it. What we're going to do is kind of overlap them, so it'll be mostly an invisible join. And the easiest way to do that is to, inside one of the ridges, is just take a hobby knife and just cut down in there and just cut that backing paper don't cut the front and then it should peel off of there fairly easily so you just lay that over the area that you want to overlap you know a little PVA glue and it'll be great so we will carry on okay, so to attach this Gonna lay there's there's a lip around that outside and I'm gonna lay this down in that lip and I'm just gonna put a bead of hot glue in there as best I can I may have to lay the hot glue down and then push this into it and try to get this as even with that outside as I can It'll kind of look like an air filter but anyway we'll get that assembled and then get that on the base and it should be great some hot glue and a bit of PVA later, and we've got that outside perimeter on there, and it's blended pretty well. Um, when you hot glue it, try to keep it to the outside of that channel that's in there, just to make it as even as possible. And then we're going to just hot glue that to this piece of chipboard that we made. So we'll get that attached. Actually, we're going to wait. This will be easier to handle without this. So we're going to wait to put that on just a little bit. And we're going to go, I'm going to do the other one, 
and then we're going to cut some inserts out of some foam to fit down in there to put our water on. So we'll be back. After getting that all glued on and put in place, I figured out I should go ahead and base it because this is kind of just out there. It's fairly strong because it's corrugated, but I don't want to take any chances. So I'm just going to lay a bead of hot glue on this bottom lip of this container because it will contact the chipboard base. And then once we get it on there, if I can get enough hot glue on it, um, once we get that on the base, then as we glue the basing material around the sides, that will ensure that the outside ring is also glued down. I think I need a better glue gun. And just kind of put that on your markings, press that down. Okay. And then as we glue that basing material on that PVA, it'll get up under there and glue that siding down and make it really extra strong. So it should be good. So we'll continue on. In order to build it up inside so we can put our water effect on top and it'll look like it has some depth, I'm going to put some foam in here, uh, some of this expanded foam. I'm going to try and get it up to a certain level. I'm going to build a template because I'm not real good at freehanding circles. I figured out that this inside seam here is almost the perfect diameter to fit about where I want inside the tank. So we're going to cut this out and then we're going to use it to trace on our big foam and we'll fit that in there. All right, so we've got that circle drawn out on our foam. We're just going to take our knife and cut that out. Um, I will spare you watching me do that because, you know, you're cutting foam with a knife. You don't really need to see me do it. Plus it's annoying to hear it. So just take your time, um, take several do it in stages. Do several cuts. Don't try to cut all the way through or you'll just end up breaking it. Um, you could probably also do a better job than I did with the circle because this is vaguely circle-like, sort of ovoid. It would have been better if I'd probably stuck a pin in the middle and taken a string and done that, but I couldn't find the string. So we'll just run with what we got and we'll make it fit. Once you get your circle cut out, You'll have to go and sort of taper it so that it fits down in this tapered bowl. And that'll require some kind of careful hand fitting. Uh, just again, take your time, cut away small sections. Um, the biggest thing is to leave that top as unmolested as you can and just taper it in at the bottom and then you should be able to squeeze it down in there pretty good. All right, so we've got that trimmed out enough. It fits right down in there, right about where we want it. So I'm going to do the other one, and then we'll set about to fixing those in place with some hot glue. One of the things that may help speed up that process too is to go ahead and cut the larger straight portions off that you can and, and kind of get that down as close to that circle, or ovoid, um, as, you, as you can. The, uh, the benefit of that is it leaves you with these offcuts you can turn into scatter terrain um, or add to buildings or whatever depending on how you cut them. Waiting for the hot glue to heat up, I took some sandpaper and roughed up the plastic everywhere that we're going to want to put paint or glue just to give it a little something extra to stick to. That'll help sort of keep everything together. So we will get to glue in that. I believe our, yep, glue gun is ready. So we're going to Put ourselves a little bead of glue on here. Try not to burn ourselves on the glue like I just did. That felt good. And we'll take and put this right down in there. Try to get that as level as you can. We'll let that set up. This is the advantage of a 
low temp glue gun. Uh, so you don't take your flesh with the glue. All right, and then we'll just try to fill in those gaps. with some more glue. Kind of lick your finger and smooth that out a little bit. Again, the advantage of using the low temp for this is you can you can do that. And just try to clean up any errant glue bits that you get. All right, so we'll continue doing that and we'll be back. We glued in the foam, and it's fairly level. Uh, I probably could have done a little better job of leveling that, um, especially on this one. That's way out of round. But anyway, we'll make it work. What I'm going to do is put some Mod Podge on this uh, for when we prime it, and then we will. I'm going to put the Mod Podge on, and then we'll do some basing. So let's get that started. I'm just going to put it on with a foam brush. You can use any kind of brush. I just find that these foam brushes are pretty convenient. And we just want to put a good layer on here to kind of protect this. And I know if you back off far enough you can spray it with spray paint and it won't melt the foam, but I still like to put the Mod Podge on. All right, so we'll get that covered and continue. Also note, I'm painting this in swirls, so in case the brush strokes do show up at the end, it'll look kind of like the water maybe is circulating. Other, you know, I figured that would be better than just going straight across. Because I do things out of order, I, I should have done this last after doing the base, but if you let this dry well, then it's fine. I just had to let it sit for a little bit. And firm up. I just don't want to get any of the basic material into that. So what we're going to do is just our typical PVA and some construction sand. And the biggest thing is to be sure to get a, I'll get some glue that's in the bottle. Kind of put a good bead right around the base of that corrugated material so it'll sort of bond to the base and be that much more firm. So we're going to spread that on and put on our basing material like we always do, and we will continue. And we just put a good thin layer down at our basing sand and shake off the excess. And I would do this in sections. I don't think I would try to do this all in one go on the base, but your mileage may vary. So we'll do that all the way around, and then we'll get ready to prime this. All right, now that the basing has dried, we will take this outside, and I'm going to hit it with uh, a rattle can uh, primer, uh, just a kind of a, a red oxide color, as I use the base for pretty much all my fallout stuff. So we will get that set up, and we'll come in and put some more paint on it. Now that it's primed, that kind of tied everything together a little bit, although it does sort of look like a cross between an air filter and a pie, but eh, we'll get to that. We'll, um, we're going to apply some black paint as a base in here, and then we'll start with our gray and finally our ground texture. So let's get started. I'm just going to use some regular old black craft paint, and I'm going to thin that out with some water and uh, we will start applying it. Because it's a large area, I'm just going to use one of these big brushes. Nothing super duper technical about it. We're just going to put down a coat of black. On the inside. And again, we will kind of go in a circle. It's 
our brush strokes. If they do show up, we want them, we'd rather have them circular than cutting across. All right, so we'll continue on with that. And once the black dries a little bit, I went back and mixed some black with some uh, the pewter gray and just a hint of silver and started to apply that to the outside rim. And we're gonna do the corrugated as well. And we're gonna save the ground texture for last in case we get any on there. And same thing in here, if you, if you get some down onto the black, not a problem, black is easy to cover up. So um, you could do this first and then the black, uh, but I would always save the ground cover for last. So we will continue on. So there's our initial base coat of the gray, just a little bit of silver. We'll go over that a little bit with some lighter gray and we'll start to dry brush the corrugated and give it kind of a rusty metal look. And then we'll get down to the ground cover. So we'll continue. So we're gonna use another large brush and I'm gonna go to the pewter gray and just apply a little dry brushing and maybe some over brushing. The various bits of this. So let's see what we get. shows up on camera but that is a pretty good edge highlight it gives kind of a scratched appearance over the rest of it all right so we will continue on back and dry brushed it again with some Quaker gray or just a much lighter gray and kind of picked out some more of the edge highlight uh, doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to put some rust effects and everything on there too, but just something to kind of help define the edges. And uh, did the same thing along the corrugation. It's got the, the darker gray and then the lighter gray on top. So we will add some, we're going to add some color in here and we're going to put some rust effects on and then we'll finally get to the ground stuff. So I went back and covered up with black everywhere I got down on there with the dry brushing. And now we're going to sponge on some dark green. This is a forest green um, as a base. We're going to try and give this kind of a, a murky appearance and maybe some illusion of depth. So we're going to put that on. We'll do that as our first coat and then we'll get progressively lighter in spots. So we will continue on. That's working better than I thought it was going to. It's already got kind of that murky sort of depth I was looking for. Uh, so let's go up a little bit shade wise and do the same thing and sort of build up some layers. This doesn't have like waves or anything so that might probably be a little, a little simpler, but um, yeah. So we'll just keep applying that and see what we get. The two different shades of green have been applied. I went back and cut in around the edges with a brush and then sponge the rest. That's kind of optional. I just didn't want to get too close to the edge with the sponge. So, and you could brush paint the whole thing. Um, I just happen to use a sponge because I'm strange that way. And you could go lighter. Uh, I'm afraid to go too light. I don't want it to look like it's radioactive or something. I just want it to look like it's kind of dank and murky. So we will continue on. Probably, I did not have what I was going to use for the water effect that I thought I had. So we're going to improvise that. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to put some rusting effects on here. And then we'll get to our ground cover and uh, see what we get. For our rust, we're going to start with a base of burnt umber. And we're going to highlight it with some nutmeg brown. Just 
dark brown and a lighter brown. We may add a little bit of an orangey, like a raw sienna. We'll see what we get, um, but let's see what that looks like first. We're going to apply this with a stippling brush. And then we'll sort of knock it back with a sponge. I don't want to go too heavy on here, but I want to give it a good kind of mildly rusty effect across the entire model. And the sponge knocking it back gives it kind of a texture, although the stippling does that as well, but that just adds to it. Just be careful not to sponge that down onto your water. Right, so let's continue on with that. The secret to good rusting, um, in my experience, has been building up layers. So I went back, I, I added the, the burnt umber, and then I put the nutmeg on top of that. And you can kind of see it gives that that sort of depth, um, along with the sponging, gave it some texture so the rusting looks pretty rusty I may go I'm gonna add just a little bit of raw sienna just to kind of highlight it and uh, we'll see what we get there so the raw sienna was a good final touch that made that rust pop without looking too fresh if you wanted fresher rust then you could go up and add uh, some orange very bright orange on top of that and just very lightly and that would really give it a, a very fresh appearance. As we used to say, so fresh you could slap it. But um, anyway, we will continue on. Overall, I think the effect is pretty good. Um, we're going to do the ground next. And then we'll figure out what to do about the water. I suspect I know, but we'll figure it out. For our ground cover, we're going to start by kind of over brushing some of our friend nutmeg brown and then we're going to add some tan that's country tan but you could use um, suburban beige whatever you got and maple sugar tan is a final kind of yellow tan highlight so we will get to dry brushing that and because i already have them out i'm going to use some of these large brushes to do this and maybe get this up where you can see it I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but that does begin to give some good contrast. And once you do those three layers, your ground cover will really pop. So we will continue on. Our ground cover is all painted and we're gonna add, because this is a water feature, not that you wanna drink that water, uh, we're gonna add some green grass and some tufts because just like our, our water tower we did, um, there's enough leakage that there's actually live plants around this. I'm going to use that as kind of a visual cue uh, on the table. And uh, plus it'll tie in with the other one too. So we will add that and be right back. And to add those tufts, I just take some PVA, you know, some white glue. And you could, use, you could use super glue or whatever. And put down a dot wherever you happen to want that and then grab whatever tuft you're going to use actually let's use a bigger one just set it down in that white glue and if a little bit of it shows that's fine it dries clear so not a big deal and we'll do the grass the same way we'll just put down some PVA and push the grass into it so we'll be back you add some of that green to your ground texture or even the dead grass um, with some tufts it really adds so much life quote unquote to your base i highly suggest um, you know anytime you can add that sort of thing because it really it, it takes it up to the next level um, even a kind of semi uh, piece of terrain like this doesn't look too bad once you put some grass and some tufts on it so I'm going to give this a hit with some dull coat and then we're going to sort out uh, the water effect on top. can't find what I wanted, um, the straight up future floor wax. I'm going to use some of my brown magic wash, which is 50-50 water and future and some brown pigment. 
um, and see I put some on this one already and I'm assuming it's going to dry kind of glossy I've noticed that that this particular wash uh, across a large area can be a little glossy so we're just going to put a little bit on here take a sponge brush and just very carefully apply it to the areas that we want to be glossy. And I don't think it'll take much. It's just enough to get that kind of shine on there. Kind of knock out those little bubbles there. All right, so we'll wait for that to dry and see what we get. Let that dry for about an hour and it is glossy. It's not as glossy as I might have hoped. Um, it's certainly not as good as the real water effect or even probably straight future would have been. Um, that's for a future episode. I'm going to get some, some probably Vallejo water effect and uh, we'll try and add some depth um, to these tanks and then we'll build some other ones. Uh, I want to build some for Necromunda as well. Uh, chemical or radioactive storage tanks or whatever. So we'll be doing more of this. And then we've also got other pieces to add to this project. Um, we're going to make some walkways that go on here with, of course, you know, granny grating and all that good stuff. So lots more to do. And so far, this uh, project is moving along pretty well, I think. Um, I'm pretty happy with how these tanks turned out. So they could be better. We can improve them later, but for now, they will definitely work for the table. Hopefully this project was useful. I really appreciate you watching this far, and if you like this kind of content, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Um, I hope I can earn your subscription. And uh, we will be doing more of this project in the future, so I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.